aren't enough the words. Is, like, there aren't enough words for it. There perhaps are, if we understand. Well, we'd have to. Is. We'd have to invent some. Like a, a, apparently, a feeling. Iran. They yeah. have a load of more words for um, emotions and stuff like that. Yeah, like, that, that's that's fine. That when you translate them, you know, end up being a sentence long and they've just yeah. got a word for it. But a feeling is a physiological thing based upon the way in which the brain is working in that moment. I, if you e ESP, extrasensual perception. Yes, yeah, so I've heard of ESP, yeah. Now, I'd say deja vu is not quite one, but it's, it's sort of the, the bridge between normal brain function and epilepsy. And or ESP, extrasensory perception. Extrasensory perception literally means to experience something which the mind has received through ways which aren't based on. It's not one of the five senses, received. right? It's just, it's a sixth sense as well. We have five right. senses. Some people have things where they can put them themselves in a the corner room. You may have experienced this where you suddenly feel really small. Yeah, you're sometimes, sometimes you feel really big. Yeah, that, that yeah, and you feel like your nose is touching the ceiling or something at night. Have you ever had that? But that's perception. But that's yeah, yeah. I'm saying right. So this is this sort of ballpark, right? Yeah. If you go a little bit further into this, yeah. okay, I and I can't control these, but I've had things come to me where there's this extrasensory perception and there's a color involved often. And, you know, there were different things. I've done this on YouTube. Like, before I went to Africa, I was getting these feelings. And then after I came back from Africa, I had a whole year where I had some of these feelings. And each one was a different colour. Yeah. I've learnt later that they're, the, in the Indian knowledge, there are these things called tattvas. And they're five different colours. It's white, black, red, yellow and blue. And each one of my things that I had had this had it one of these colours attached to it. Yeah. And this when I was nineteen, and it and I got this final one, and it was white, and it it was like Jesus or God or something, but it scared the shit out of me at that point. Mm. But then later in life, I kind of with with my better understanding of what I believe God to be mm. than at that stage of my life changed the whole you know they weren't scary anymore and do you know what I mean so what was my point there that extra century perception yeah there's a there's this other stuff going on that I needed to explain I needed to you know but I can explain understand that. can you yeah like when you're talking about extra century perception like you, you do realize that we don't have five senses we have a lot more senses than that there's our heat perception there's our balance perception you can put your hand behind yourself, you can't see it, but you can still sense where in space <coughs> it is relative to the rest of your body. And, like, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of senses. Well, yeah, but some of those are done by hearing, and hearing is a sense. Uh, uh, the senses that we're most And the heat aware would of, be a touch sense, I would have thought. You can't touch heat. Yeah, but you, you, you can, can touch where heat's coming from, and you can feel the object to be hot. But it's but the understanding of heat. But it's not an extra. You, you it's heat. not. It's not like a sixth sense. You feel well, you, you could you, you, you can feel look that warmth up and you'll see. because you've got warmth receptors. A sense is a sensation. You understand that. So you can you yeah, have the sensation. Yeah, of heat. I have sensations you have all the time. Yeah. You have the sensation of balance. You have the sensation yeah. of heat, hot and cold. You have the sensations of sight, sounds. A sense is a sensation. Like you sense your balance, you, you sense all that. But like, you're not consciously thinking about the most of the... Right. So when you're building up these images, and you're having a thought and a feeling, and there are colours attached to them or whatever, you know what synesthesia is. Right? Synesthesia is where some people can hear a sound, or you hear a word, and there'll be a colour attached to it. Right. Like if I was to say the word zapadi, and I was going to say the word boo-boo. One of those words would sound sharp, and not one of those words would sound quite curvy. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is the mechanic of that. And then you attribute those sensations which you don't understand where else to base them. You attribute them to your spiritual beliefs, and then you assume that they must be connected. But then, but they're not. Would you understand what each of these things stem from? Yeah. 
Yeah, but you deja, can't. Deja you vu, can't. You can't I can tell me. Deja vu as well. Yeah, but I also said that you know that deja vu was just the beginning of this sort of area because I just wanted to give you something that but deja vu gives you some upon, idea of what I'm talking about. But even deja vu is based upon some kind of epilepsy. It's to do with the electrical signals with your brain at that moment. It's when your um, the processes by which your short-term memory are created and stored is slightly uh, your conscious perception is like slightly behind your short term memory storage by the point I've heard them explain before but it yeah. just it just doesn't mean I'm gonna buy what they say. But that's because it doesn't happen for no reason. No it's it's happening the number because of, of what's going on inside your brain at that moment. Well okay then that's no re there, there's a reason then isn't there? Yeah then that's yeah. the reason for your feelings, that's the reason for your thoughts. It's all what's taking place inside your brain. Even your belief systems take place, it's all inside your brain. Your, your ESP is just extra senses that you haven't been aware of yet, or haven't been told about, but you experience them. When we experience things and we don't know why we're experiencing it, it's so easy to attribute it to another outside source, like God or some other realm. Yeah, and it's so easy for other people to attribute it to a malfunction. It's not a malfunction of the brain. It's how the brain happens to be processing in that moment. It hasn't died. Has so made you insane. what are you saying it is then, if it's not a malfunction? <laughs> it's simply how your brain is working in that moment. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. Your brain is working, your brain is in a particular condition right now. And the condition it's in right now is based upon your emotional standpoint, all the senses you're receiving. Mm -hmm. and, so you know, what, what, what causes the deja vu? I just said, it's when you're, the processes that's, that create your short term memories it's taking place slightly before your conscious perception of what's taking place in front of you. Because you're But why does that happen at certain times? It happens when the electrical signals within your brain are slightly out of sync. And why and does that happen? Because of the conditions of your brain at that moment. But you're you're implicating a malfunction I'm without not, I'm not, saying it. I'm not saying it's a malfunction. Well, what saying, are you saying it isn't? Is it is it done for a specific reason? It's simply naturally occurring. And the reason why it's naturally occurring so it could is based on the so conditions of the brain. So it could just happen randomly, effectively? Not necessarily randomly, but based on preconditions of the brain. Your brain right now... So you're saying it doesn't happen for a reason? I'm saying it happens because of the nature of the thing created. The <laughs> does it happen for a reason? Though? It happens because that's the way it is. It happens that so the condition of your so brain... So it does right, happen for a reason? It happens because of preconditions. So it's almost like a built-in uh, device. I want to trigger a deja vu. When you get a bug in a computer. So you, that's a malfunction. That's not necessary. It's You're saying there's something wrong with the design. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying it's based upon the natural... How many deja vus have you had? In I've had life? quite a few experiences of deja vu. And do you not notice that sometimes it feels they're nice? Bit... They're what? And sometimes they're not nice. Some moments I experience are nice and some moments I'm experiencing are not nice. If an episode of Deja Vu happens to take place within either of those moments, I'm going to attribute it to... Have you all... So, what I'm saying is, have you always found them pleasant, or have you always found them unpleasant, or a bit of a mixture? I haven't found them in either way pleasurable or unpleasurable. Yeah, or like them or dislike them. I just was aware, oh, this yeah. is Deja Vu, yeah. and then that's it. Yeah. You had one at work, didn't you? Yeah. But that was because the electrical signals in my brain, how they were at that yeah. moment. I mean, I, the first one I remember was a good one. Mm. And it was like, oh, I've been there before. Yeah. But it was just as we arrived at uh, primary school kids when you have your week away at Glazebury or Kilvrew, yeah. right? It was just as we pulled up to the house and I had a deja vu and it felt good and I had a great time there. Okay. Right? That's the first one I remember. I remember getting a really fucking strong one and it was like a triple one mm -hmm. and it was it was in my twenties um, I was supposed to be getting a job to save up the money to go travelling in Africa but I was around my mate's house smoking some doobies and I think at one point he said yeah, should I have another one mm -hmm. and I got this fucking triple strong deja vu like not nice like I've been here too many times before sort of thing I've got to do something different so I said, no, no, I'm going home. And that morning I got woken up by the phone, but I was quick enough to answer it. Mm. Job job offer. Yeah. Great, I've got a job. So to me, if I didn't get that deja vu, I probably would have been too tired to make 
the phone call in the morning and wouldn't have got the job and maybe wouldn't have got to go to Africa. That's how I thought of it. So you think deja vu is some kind of way of prepping you to make the right choice? I feel that some deja vu is saying you're going off track mm. and some deja vu is saying you're back on track. By what mechanic does that happen though? For some it just it happen, sometimes, sometimes happening, right? Well, like you said, there was a way that the brain could do that by sort of slowing down the impulses or something. That can happen, right? Yeah. So then I see that that's, there's the function of it. What Now what triggers it is an intelligent being saying, you need this message right now. And it's a way to, you know, it's but a you way to make you think. you only experience deja vu within the moment of experiencing deja vu. Hmm? You only experience deja vu when you're experiencing In that vu. moment, yeah. It's a yeah. short, quick thing, and then it's done. It's... Yeah, it's nothing afterwards apart from how much you decide to put into that. If you decide to ignore it, you know, you'll ignore it. I think you probably if should. If you decide to it. act on it, but I'm just saying that that for me was a good a good thing because the choice you made, made after me, the déjà vu. Yeah, but that was based upon your choice after the déjà vu. It wasn't based yeah. actually upon the déjà vu. It, within the experience of déjà vu, no, but it, to me it. it was a way that you know whatever it was I believed in at the time could communicate with me. And if you made a different choice, you could also attribute the same thing to that choice as well. But it was with a different outcome, different it, consequences. Because it was, but it was weird that when that began. So I don't know if I worked six weeks or whatever. But as it really looked like I was going to Africa, mm. I started to get this extrasensory perception. Mm. I I just you know I sort of sort of seen an image and that a color was linked to it which was yellow. And there was something a bit eerie about it, yeah. and so I was a little bit worried about. And um, went to Africa, spent a month in Nairobi, and then was going to Uganda. And then this is when I was, that was that feeling was coming back to me. It was getting nearer, and then I was staying at this house, and it had this sign outside, and that was a a link to this feeling I was having. And, you know, I ended up having a bit of an issue with a guy that I felt I'd been pre-warned about. And so it kind of this was partly, you know, the beginning of my journey when I came back from Africa and had that moment I talked about earlier where I yeah. thought I'd want to lose it. So after that I shut it off. I went to Norway, did the army, spent three years in Norway in total. Came back to England. I hadn't smoked cannabis for three years, mm. but I started, you know, having a, one now and then and I was just sort of slowly easing back into continuing what I'd left off as I see it. Yeah. This was my purpose in life to do this, to to look into this sort of stuff. It all came back into God and this and you know. I feel as though when we look into something, part of that process of seeing if it's true or not is questioning whether it could be false, or could be wrong. But how many times do you actually try to see if you're wrong? Well I like I said, I gave it up for three years, so I because you were doing at that things, point so. I decide you know it's got to where it scared me, yeah. and I thought I'm I'm because I thought at that time I might have to ask my parents to book me into a mental hospital. Yeah. <laughs> that was my <laughs> fear. That. Like yeah. I started reading this book just to get my mind off some off this. You know, mm. I was starting to dwell too much. So, so were you trying? To I turned it off those? then. I said no, I'm wrong about this now but it you know when I look back on it now it was just the fear I had you know my idea of what God was wasn't any different from the Bible really and mm -hmm. I hadn't read that much of it so you know there was a lot of room for fear whereas once I'd had you know my understanding of what I thought reality was a lot more nailed down mm -hmm. I had a lot less fear but from what I've heard or at least how I put together what I've heard from you. I don't think you have really put together what you believe. I, I think you've got I ideas. haven't for other people. Yeah. yeah. I haven't to, in a sense, present... You know, one thing I have wanted to do is be a public speaker and speak about this, and I've tried on YouTube. But what I've realised is we've all got so many different interpretations of words, it's, it's nigh on impossible. Well, we need to know our audience then, don't we? 
Well, yeah, and that's, that's, no that's why I think I quite you. like. I quite like it speaking to an individual about it and mm. someone who's interested in it mm. because then at least you, you know you are learning about other people's interpretations of words in a sense but you believe that those interpretations are wrong no when, when, no no one's interpretations of a word is in a sense wrong they just we all they, they may differ so it's the way in which we we attach stuff to a word, words. you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why a conversation is needed because that's you need you to like you need to know your audience, right? We really say the words in different ways and yeah. stuff. It's so, like you know when we were saying about the burden of proof. Right. A part of showing that what you're saying is right is also being able to say it in the right way to the right type of people. Or the right way to anyone. Yeah. But like I, I, I genuinely still I, I genuinely still can't understand how it, like so let, let me so we've got the um the uh, genetic experience thing where experiences are genetic like you've got the experiences of your ancestors of your genes that's yeah. something which you feel right and then we've got the um the spirit realm emotional realm and physical realm idea and then we've got the God has parents and siblings and stuff like that. Then we've got the soulmate idea. Then we've got... Oh no, the reincarnation on a different planet isn't an actual idea, is it? Or is it actual No, idea? just reincarnation at the moment. Just yeah. reincarnation. But there are other planets like... Uh, yeah. With people like us yeah. in this galaxy. But and, then, and then we've got another idea, I think you said. But I still don't understand... How do these represent the same thing? How are they actually together? Is reality one thing? Well, they're all they're all linked to this reality that we we have. I still don't understand though how all these things actually are connected. I mean, less so the DNA thing. I mean, that's not really. There wasn't really my concept that was yours I think well I remember watching one of your videos where you were talking about Jesus had um, children and that they would have the experience of Jesus within their genetics right and then you think that you, you went on to say that then you, you were sitting on Ed Shield in this video yeah do you remember that one yeah so that yeah. was that was that really was before, before I'd I th formed any theories and that was more about in a sense thinking could I be Jesus or something. Or at least could you have the experience of Jesus in your genes? Yeah, maybe, yeah. 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 But I still don't understand how all these ideas fit together. So no, well I'd, I would say that one, you know, that was that was kind of, that was before the born again moment. So that was kind of, I, mean, I was just sort of skirting around the edges wondering you, about right. shit. Like whenever I come up with a new idea, it has to make sense with what I've already made sense with, otherwise I have to either rethink that idea Why? or rethink my way. So when did you come up with your concrete theory? <laughs> well that developed over time. So when were you happy with it? When were you finished with my... Because maybe, I... maybe about a month ago I, I came oh, to the right, point. Oh, quite recent. I'm always developing. Because I think changing the, you know, when I've thought of stuff that's changed... Uh, what I thought before, which was mainly in 2014, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Because it was like, it felt like you made an instant progress. Because like, you know, oh, I've been travelling down the, the wrong fucking road. Uh, I'm going the wrong way, you know, which... Realising you've been going the wrong way and you can turn around and start going the right way... I mean, that's instant improvement. Being able to admit when you're wrong it is, it is a good sign of improvement, yeah. Because then you can start thinking about things that might be more correct or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, as a young person, I was quite, um, I mean, happy to accept what people told me was the case. Yeah, that's the same with everyone, I think, until, like, you develop a point where your critical thinking starts maturing. Yeah. 
but like, do you know how your all your ideas represent the same thing? Why should <laughs> do they have to? Is it a requirement? If you believe that reality is one, I feel structure. like it, yeah. All my theories, I do feel like they're linked. Like even the green eye, blue eye stuff. Yeah, but how are they linked? Because that's something which you really well, need to develop and work on. It's like, it's like the history of the world and everything. That's how I see it. That's how they're linked. The big, big picture. I think you know. I'm, I was going for the big, big picture. The reality and everything. You know, like the. That Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and there the computer that was working on mm -hmm. the answer of life. Yeah. And it come up with forty two. Something <laughs> arbitrary. Yeah. So you know, I'm. I mean, so it's a pretty broad subject, and to have to have like three or four theories that I would say you could argue the cornerstones for like the big picture. So are they are they all right? Or are some of them potentially wrong? Um, soulmates, um, you know, 99.9. .9. Godmother and father, 99.9. .9. The fact that they have father and brother and sisters, and maybe it's sort of it's like 98. <laughs> But that's kind of one for later. What do you mean? Well, like I said, like my understanding that the universe is going to develop in the next million years, I can have another look at it then. Because that's sort of part of the longer picture, you know, that's what's beyond the next couple of billion years. But why do you think you have to continue existing after you die? Because I feel like we've, we've got this perpetual growth thing that we need, that the so this is comes from the soul, what the soul wants, as far as I can tell. Yeah. And that, you know, like, a lifetime, 70 years, isn't long enough for the soul to really develop. So there would have to be more, more in the pipeline, you know. But I still don't know what you think the soul is. Or its soul purpose. is an, an entity in a sense that, although the one <laughs> love is... The, the end, the fuel for us all, mm. including God. You know, without love, God would be nothing. We'd all be nothing without love. But that love in these entities, think of them as vessels, going through this long lifespan, mm. is is a way that we can. You know, have a jolly good life. Otherwise, why would we even be it? What the fuck else are we doing here? So these theories of yours are to explain why you experience and why you shouldn't have to stop experiencing. Yeah. And that, because, yeah, that there's some sort of goal, you know, is, is always to become happier. Because I think, you know, we experience unhappiness, we don't like it. Mm. Who fucking likes that? No one. So obviously we want less of that. The more of the more of the happy times, and I guess it, as it goes along, it just gets it can get more and more complicated, mm. and we're still probably going to have to have a, a bit of unhappiness every now and then, just to remind us of how much we don't want it. So all your ideas and stuff like that is because you don't want to die. No. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't. Being alive, I don't want to lie. Actually, when I was, you know, I used to think, oh, I'm going to live until I'm 130. That used to be one of my goals. Mm. So, yeah, definitely. I don't want to die. I don't want to cease to exist. You are going to die. This physical body will, yes. And what will you, what will you continue on as? as? When I go to sleep. I will be in there permanently, so I'll be fully aware of my existence there. But we... and, and then at some point, I will shed that last remains of... Because that spiritual body kind of looks like this body. Mm. And I will get rid of that, and I'll be looking forward to having another life. 
So with all you your ideas body. and theories and stuff like that stem from the fact that you don't want to die, mm. why does it need to have a spirit realm, an emotional realm, a mother god, a father god, a, a soulmate? Because I've experienced them. But you've experienced them here. So why do they need to exist anywhere else that we go? Because this this isn't permanent. This is temporary. Yeah, because we're, we're all going to die. <laughs> yeah. But like... That's why. Okay. So we can do it again. How would you feel about Maybe. if you died and that was the end of your existence? I'd be de devastated. So all your ideas, all your thoughts, this is to stop yourself from thinking about no longer existing then. <coughs> yeah. So why does that and mean that any of it, it would be, but it works for you. Yeah. But why does that mean that it has to be actually true? Well, I had to believe it. Otherwise, if I was just fooling myself on purpose, it wouldn't work, would it? Do you have to believe it or do you feel as though you need to believe it? I have to believe it because I, it, unless something came along that made me change my mind about all those feelings I've had mm. and I don't see how that's possible another girl would have to come along that gave me way deeper feelings you'd have to be open for that though because if you just shut off to everything that's going to well, show that you're wrong what I'm saying is the, de the depth of the feelings I've already had I can't mm. see how they could be beat because you haven't experienced those times yet yeah but I, I don't so if I did then I'd have to reappraise it Mm. But until that's happened, I won't. And I can't see it happening. Do you want to feel God? Well, I do feel God. You do? Yeah. How do you feel God? Uh, I, I, I feel God based upon... I, I just feel God based upon how I am at the moment. Where do you feel God? Uh, in myself and in the reality around me. You just know. so... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But like... Do you feel like we're in God? Do you ever feel like... Well I feel like God is quite simply the embodiment of all things. So we are in God, we're of God. Like we're a fragment of God, like what you think. Like we're... We're as much a part of God as what... One of my eyes is okay. of me. Okay, oh, yeah. Because you see that God is the all... God, God is everything. Everything, yeah. 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 Okay. But I, I, I like to think about how could everything actually be, like, because I, I, I can't, I can't. But can, accept... can that God, can God comfort you? Do you ever need comfort? I mean, judging from some of your posts, I would say yes. Mm. Well, I can comfort myself, or I can <laughs> seek comfort from other things. How do you comfort? Can you com comfort yourself inwardly, inside? Like, if you, if you ever had a feeling where you. you People might explain, oh, your stomach's dropped or something. Yeah, know? but that would still be of me. That would still be in me. Yeah. We're like, we're, Can we're you people... comfort yourself from that? Well, it would take a different way of thinking than the way of thinking that made me uncomfortable in the first place. That caused way. it, right. So as long as yeah. I focus in the way in which I'm thinking... Yeah, then, then you're think, okay. Yeah, because like, if you feel something, a, a way of thinking is going to be prompted. And then you're going to have physiological signs as well. And then those physiological things are going to influence the way in which you feel further. So in one moment you'll feel about God about one way, the same as with anything else. And then the next minute you'll feel something different, or in a different way. But like, if everything is God, is God, if God is everything, then we're a part of that. Yeah. But I can explain that based, based on natural laws. Because we all are physically a part of, of reality. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we are stardust. All, yeah, yeah. We are just, just we're made of the same elements mm -hmm. as everything else. But like, for my idea of God, I don't need God to be something which is male, female, exists in all different realities, has 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 different things going on. I just choose to accept that reality is what reality is, and I choose to call that God. But I can explain all of that. Why would you ever need other people? To show me where I might be wrong. Because like when you sit there and you're thinking inside yourself, you're just thinking inside yourself. And the chances of you being correct when you're just thinking by yourself the whole time and looking at things through confirmation bias, you're always going to be showing yourself that you are correct. 
unless someone has who has different experience of the way of thinking. Yeah, but that isn't how I led myself. But, I led myself by what I feel I will... Yeah, based on what you feel. Based on what I'm feeling. And that wasn't controlled by me. It was stuff coming out from outside into me. It was the way in which you were processing the information from the... Well, I was just waiting outside. and stuff would happen. I mean, I really wasn't doing anything. But you were still processing in the way in which you process. I mean, sometimes I'd sit down with an intent. Yeah. A lot... It was just sit down you and see what say, comes. But you've been quite confident, comfortable in saying that you do reject things that show you might be wrong. Yeah, but I don't reject them just out of hand. I will always, I will always tackle like the thing you know with the plant, and oh maybe yeah. that will die, and then. Re but, but you'll then, come up with an And idea then going you. well, because I, one thing I do come back to quite often is thinking, well, God is not a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> that in my mind, would be cuntish. To give us all these feelings, to, to let us think that we could, you know, an eternal being or whatever, an mm. entity with a soulmate and a mother, a creator and everything, and it was this growth that we were going to have, so like one day in the future, you know, we're going to have all these marvellous things, and then, you know, for all that to be a lie, just to keep me happy while I'm here, but who would told be, you this line? Would be cuntish. But who told you this? Well, it was I was seeking the truth. So, so your experiences a, told you this? It was a truth. But the way in which you were processing your experiences mm -hmm. was telling you this? Yeah, so I could all be creating it myself. That is possible. That's but the, the most but possible obviously, outcome. if I die and realise I'm wrong, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it yeah. or even know I'm wrong. Because if you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't actually matter. No. But... Maybe it does matter while you're alive because you're going to be dictating your actions. Yeah, so I would rather person. believe while I'm alive. Yeah. And obviously you are going to live differently. I'm going to be happier with not succeeding in certain areas mm. because I think, well, you know, I'll have another go at it next time. Even my fucking thing, you know, me being Christ, thinking that and then thinking... I really like it's it's for the next life. Because mm. I when I first sort of embraced those feelings, it was quite you know not hard, but you know yeah hard to embrace that feeling that God's chosen you to be the one, right? Yeah. To to take to go okay then I'll do it. I'll it's give it a go. Right? Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I did. <laughs> but I did right. And then I was thinking, well, what would Christ do, whatever. But anyway, and then sort of coming to the conclusion, well, I think this, uh, this isn't for this life. This is for the next one, when the micronova is going to happen. So you decide what's for this life and what's for next So, life. well, I didn't decide it. It's the conclusion that I came to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah so you, so you could that. say I decided it. <laughs> yeah. 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 You could say that. But I don't see it as that. I see it as this is the vi I saw a little vision. Mm. Now you could say I create that vision. I don't say I created that vision. That vision was shown to me, I believe. You created it. But I believe it was shown to me. Because of your Because I'm being guided, yeah. So I can, I, you know, I'm, you know, I can, it's interesting to see at this point, yeah, I could be absolutely just some nutter as far as anyone else is concerned. But that doesn't actually matter to me. As long as you're happy. What matters to me is what, yeah, I feel is my truth. And but do you need a belief system so expansive and so comprised of so many things in order to actually be happy and to succeed in that? I way? think I did. Because it, was, it, it felt to me this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Have you confused yourself in any way regarding... What, my theories? Yeah. I don't think so because, you know, and I invite anyone to poke the holes in them well, and I appreciate your your point of view okay. you know you show me a, a view of my beliefs and all but I already kind of knew that because I already knew you, you know what you believe something until like. you feel it you're not gonna be able to know what I'm on about in a sense but you still haven't been able to explain how you feel because all your because are actually linked because together. these feelings are there. There's more information in these feelings than you could spout out in a 
in a week, you know. Well, I'm very talented. Well, maybe you could, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I could. Okay, well, maybe that's something which you need to develop. Because if you can't explain how your idea is a part of the same idea, when they're all trying to explain how everything is linked, then maybe you don't understand. You don't I could, understand I could, I believe I could help someone already on the journey. I don't. But that journey has. To be I don't. Journey. I can't get people onto that journey. Yeah, we're because all, we're all going down different paths I, in life. If right? I was to start trying to get you onto it, yeah, you know, all I'm going to do is make you, is piss you off. Well, not necessarily. Well, most likely. Because I would have to go areas where you don't want to go. And making someone go somewhere they don't want to go is going to piss them off. Well, I'm quite I could even delay... Them. I don't want to delay anyone who mm. might be about to go on that journey. But if someone was already on that journey and we were having a discussion and things I was saying were tallying with things they felt, mm. you know, I might be able to assist them but I probably wouldn't even want to. They probably wouldn't even want me to because part of your journey is, well, is you your own self-discovery. You wouldn't want another person guiding you. Not unless I asked for it, no. But then why do you have discussions like this? Because I think it's... Why not, you know? It's interesting. And if you you wanted the discussion... Yeah. And, and I'm up for it. When was the last time, though, you accepted <laughs> that someone might be right and you might be wrong? Well... AJ Miller, right, when I watched him, when I got into him at the beginning, every fucking word he said to me at that point was basically, you know, because the first few big things he said I agreed with, and I, as he was saying them, I was almost feeling this soul organs within me that he talked about and stuff. Yeah. But then there were some things he said that, you know, I was finding a bit puzzling, and I was, I was starting to make videos about where I'm against AJ Miller. So, you know, it kind of grew out of a conflict of ideas with him, in a sense. And I sort of went quite anti him. Because yeah, you said he was the anti you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The antichrist. And I think, you know, him calling himself Jesus and stuff, you know. You did say yourself that you were Jesus. I never said the word Jesus. Well, you said that you were the chosen one of God. Yeah. The anointed one. <laughs> which is Christ, right? Yeah, the Christ. Uh, yeah. The Christ of the time. The anointed one. And I'm not, I'm not, I haven't completely left that. But I have thought it's not going to be in this life, most likely. Yeah. It's going to be the next one. So it is a total fucking cop-out. I totally <laughs> accept that. Okay. So, yeah. That's why I'm probably keeping a bit quiet about it. And I don't really think about that much, like, yeah. as I used to, I used to kind of, because I, cause I kept doing this thing where if I say something to God, he'll give me the feeling whether I'm right or not. I must have said, what, so I'm the chosen one, and yeah. got the nice feeling, <laughs> fucking, so see, that's many a, see, times, that's the thing. it was see, weird. Not every time you feel something, is it reflective of what you believe that reality to be then? No, Only what makes you yeah, feel... Yeah, and in the beginning, I was getting feelings from other beings and not, you know, not necessarily God. And it was it took me a while to tune in to what was God and what wasn't. I still can't understand. I can describe <laughs> how I know if it's God or not. Okay, but that would be based on your feelings. Yeah, but it's, these, these are feelings I get internally. So when I feel I'm in c contact with God, mm. the... The energy, if you like, is absolutely 100% pure. Everyone's, everyone who believes in God... If there's somebody else, if there's them. somebody else, there's like a, a tingle to it. Mm. And that's how I know. And Father God comes in differently than Mother God. Mother God is kind of all around, mm. and but Father God is kind of... Because in a sense, Mother God is within Father God, so Father God has to pass through Mother God, then into me to feel him separate. I still don't. Under, I, I still. I still don't think you understand. I don't. I don't think you even believe that all these things are part of the same thing. Why? Well, how could they be not? How That's what I'm be asking you. But you, all, you, you, you don't have an answer to the question. Yeah, but I, so obviously I'm not getting what you mean. 
How are they part of the same reality? You want them to be like constructed out of wood and I want them, metal. I, I want because you, you're saying that the, I don't want them to be constructed out of wood and metal. <laughs> but you're saying that they all impact each other and they are all connected somehow. They are causally linked. I'm trying to understand how is that causal link in effect? How is that causal link actually governed by? You know what I mean? Like. The physical mechanics of it that lead it to be part of the same unit. I mean, it could be that you know we've got our place where our souls exist, okay, and that when we're given a life, we're projected into an aspect of God, and it's like a you know a training room. So there, there might not be any fucking stars or anything out there. Mm. You know, it could just all be like a hologram, as some people like to say. Yeah. You know, you put in a temporary mm. hologram, and when you sleep, you know, what, whatever that is. I mean, it could be like that, but I just like, I like the fact that I feel that the physical universe is real. Yeah. You know, it is something out there that's millions and millions of years old and doing what it's doing. And that, and I just this model that I've got in my mind that I've tried to communicate and I think the best I don't know if you've seen it my the best existence theory on the planet I think it's I called I've seen a lot in videos so I'm on one of my newer channels have you gone over to religion rebel for Jesus no no I've only watched videos on Philosophy. Yeah, so I think it's on. It might. It's on the Stephen Hartley one, and it's on the Rebel for Jesus. So it's short videos and I've drawn See, pictures. And <laughs> 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 You've drawn pictures within this three-dimensional space. Yeah, I've drawn. I've drawn. I've drawn the whole diagram. Yeah. yeah, but that diagram <laughs> is a two-dimensional diagram yeah. created in a three-dimensional world. <laughs> Have you actually All described? Eleven dimensions. Yeah, but have well, you actually described how it represents high dimensions? Yeah, no, it's not easy. <laughs> so do you actually think, so, so, so you don't think they're all linked? You don't think that they actually are somehow connected? No, they're definitely linked because when something happens in the emotional realm, that seeps through into the physical and the spiritual. And what I'm wondering is, how does it seep, what seeps, what does it seep through? Where so it where seeps through like this. So there's an emotion that you need to feel. Yeah. And it, you haven't done it yet. So you've had the opportunity to just feel it yeah. as it came, but you didn't, right? So it's hanging out there in the emotional universe. Which is where? In relation to this universe, it's, where? Well, is it's it? right here. Okay, so. In the different dimension. And how is that dimension? And it's in the existence? dominant dimension. It's, it's on top of this one. So mechanically. Mechanically, how is that mechanically is a physical thing. Yeah. So. Physical how, how, things only belong in the physical realm. Okay. So, it so you don't have any real physical... Well. For it to have a causal cause and effect, it has to have some way of impacting. Yes, but you're... To, you're don't, that's you know, I'm, I'm not the, the physical universe and its laws, physical laws of cause well, and I effect... When I use the word physical yeah. in this sense, with mm -hmm. regards to other universes and realities. Yeah. I don't just mean physical within this universe, I mean physicalities of the other facets of reality as well. They all have to exist somehow in order for them to, to exist and be real. Well, and I'm curious about... They don't have any physical properties whatsoever. They don't have the because same the physical... physical properties that we have here, right? No, yeah, different ones. But they are real. So they have different, mm. they have different physicalities. They're real. So they are physical. But they don't need... So anyway, let me tell you how it works. So <laughs> yeah. that emotion is sitting there in the dimension, dimension and then you, you know, something a squirrel lands on your windowsill, okay. and that was that was how it leaked through to the physical world. Okay. They was trying to give you a clue, and then you go to sleep at night, and then you, you know, ten squirrels jump on your head or something in the dream. Mm. It's just giving you another clue of this emotion you've got to feel, right? And maybe this emotion is, you know, don't want to eat animals anymore, right? But you, you still don't listen to it. Mm. Then the, the messages in the physical and the spiritual get stronger. You know, just try and make it more and more obvious. Until yeah. eventually, the, you know, something's happening which is impacting your life so much you can't 
continue until you've dealt with this emotion. I understand what you're saying is happening, but I don't understand how it's happening physically. Right, so you'll never get a scientific instrument to detect it. Well, I'm not asking for that. Because we are the beings who can detect it. So every individual has to do it for themselves. But it's happening somehow, some way. It's happening to ev yeah, and yeah. it's happening to but everyone. what is the how? Well, I only know way? how it's happening to me. Which you can only describe through feelings and not through how it's actually taking place. I mean, if someone else were to do, you know, similar things to me and we were both in agreement and then we could compare how it occurred to us both and mm. you know because something happened on my born again moment something happened to me that was very physical to me and I had to at some point look round to see if everybody else was Seen. noticing it too yeah. if nobody else or everyone was just carrying on with their own thing so it took place within your mind as a projection of your outside reality yeah but it was so yeah exactly yeah. it was it was definitely out there well, it was it existed inside your mind as a projection of your outside reality, right? Yeah, it was almost like I was, I was breaching into another realm in a sense. Like this, this one was almost disappearing. Yeah. And in the, the, there was this like this green sort of mist. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, it was, yeah, yeah obviously. But you see me here, right? But that's when I went through that ceiling that I talked about before. Yeah. You know, I used to get high to the point where I got to the ceiling and I got scared. But with this new idea of my what I thought God was and everything, mm. I was less fearful. Yeah. I was more trusting to go with it. More confident. And that ceiling just went. I just went straight through it. I, you know, high like in terms of highness and happiness. Yeah. yeah. But you do, do you see me here? So that's why I thought, like what you believe reality to be, mm. affects things you know how happy you can feel that's yeah. what it affected for me but do you see me here yeah do you see this table here yeah do you see the camera there yeah how with my eyes okay but like the, the lights with entering your eyes or yeah. whatever yeah. sounds entering your ears and all that but yeah and then that information that's being encoded in your brain and it's happening inside your brain all the information is in there and based upon the angles of light the wavelengths of light you come up with mathematical equations that show you distance and shapes. Mm. Those equations that are giving you an image are inside your brain. And it's projecting your outside reality to show you what it is and where things are in relation to yourself. This is the same mechanic by which dreams take place. Except you're not using your eyes. But you are still using the information which is inside your brain. It's still being processed. Like when you're having a dream, you're experiencing an outside reality and that outside reality is a surprise to you. Unless you're having a lucid dream and you can change it, right? That's the same as when you see things around you in the world. It's when you're awake and you're seeing something which is happening that no one else can see. That doesn't mean it's happening outside. That means it's happening inside your brain. Yeah. Just like all the other things you see. Even yeah. if they're outside yourself. Like, you see these things inside your mind. But if I was... But, um, you know... They're happening in my brain, but I, it's not like I can just turn that on and off. No one's asking you want. to, yeah. Yeah, so it's happening for a reason. But that reason... And that combined... Based outside that, yourself. You know, it wasn't just what I saw. Yeah. It was what I was feeling. And all of this as is I saw place it. inside your mind, inside your no, brain. No, if I'm feeling stuff here, that's not in my mind. No, that's yeah. physiological. Yeah. And a physiological sensation is based upon... The signals sent from your body to your brain back to your body back to your okay, brain. Okay, but you can't just, I can't just turn them on and off when I want. I can't just suddenly you know make feeling, myself feel really happy. You know when I can't feeling, just suddenly make myself feel really scared. We can do that, but it's damn near impossible to do it yourself solo. Yeah. You know when someone is feeling anxious? Yeah. yeah. You can talk to them, and they can talk to themselves, and they can reattribute themselves, reattune themselves to the world around them, and drop that sense of anxiousness. You can do that with all your feelings and thoughts. But they're existing inside your brain. No, I don't think you've had the, the depth of feelings. I've had some pretty deep feelings. But I know where feelings come from. I know what they are. And like, 
I know it's based upon information I'm receiving from an outside source, but it's all based upon how I'm actually processing that information, which is based upon me. I can't always dictate the information I'm receiving, but upon reflection I can dictate what I do with it. You know what I mean? But it's all internal. Yeah, we're all on our own path. Yeah. So having a belief and having feelings because of the belief and being able to put together patterns based upon the belief doesn't mean that belief is real. No, but it can be your best guess. Yeah, but a best guess without testing and observation is no theory at no, all. No, but this is the path I went on. I wanted to know. So yeah. I, I, let the, I let that guide me. But you don't know. I know enough for myself. You feel it's true, but you have separate but ideas which you have no way of bringing together no, into one. No, I don't see them as separate. But you, if you don't see them as separate... It's all part of the you... big picture. What's, what's important to me, <coughs> like, when I sit with myself, right, I've got me, Yeah. got God, Yeah. Mother God, got my soulmate. What else do I need? The ability to question yourself. No, I, what I'm saying is those, these are my th main theories. Soulmate, God, yeah. my existence. Do you know what I mean? I got access to all the knowledge I could ever want. I can just think of people Do and speak to them. Do you want the knowledge of how these things are connected? I don't. Because if you have access, to I that I knowledge. have this. See, I keep going back to this image because the, this was an image I actually saw in a a major vision I had while I was in Africa yeah. and it was this triangle was drawn for me and but it did this thing in the middle I can't exactly remember and then and then I've drawn that three dimensional area on this triangle I'm dreaming about so if you're going to ask me how they're connected yeah. every time I think of them I, I do see this triangle the dominant realm on the top and the physical and the spiritual, and it's a triangle. So you've drawn this diagram. Can you actually explain what every single point on this diagram represents in the material world, the reality outside? Well, I wouldn't go into that complexity. I just maybe you would need to to determine the physical. The truth. Well, look, I did say, you know, I felt like I've gone for the big picture. I've got the jigsaw yeah. corners and the, the most of the straights. You know, and what I am enjoying now is like just observing, and every now and then it feels like, yeah, that's a jigsaw piece in my theory, you know, and I'm, yeah, you know, it's probably still largely empty because this, this is why you need more than one life because I know there's a lot more to learn. So, what knowledge of your belief do you have now that comes from a previous life? I think um, there are there are f the stuff that comes from previous lives is um, emotions that you're used to deal that that you've dealt with before yeah. come easier because you you know some things you've done before some things you haven't yeah. so there's probably been challenges you know I think in my previous life I died at around the age of thirty eight thirty nine mm. and that age in this life was there was quite a struggle. I had this issue with my leg and couldn't walk too well. But your knowledge of your beliefs. So I think that was a that was a that was a a stage to overcome, you know, survive longer than I did in my previous life. But that was knowledge you acquired in this life. Well or last least... time I didn't manage it. Last time I died But that's not knowledge before I was that's a belief you have. That's a feeling you have, right? Yeah, yeah. No, well, sorry, say your question again. Your belief system that you have now. Yeah. Which parts of that that you know to be true? Yeah. Have you learned from previous lives? Well, I think I've probably believed in God before. Yeah. But that's a that's a belief, not a knowledge. Because like, if you think that... Well, like, not if God is real, then it's knowledge, isn't it? Well... <laughs> There's a, if it's true, there's a distant, it's knowledge. There's a distant galaxy somewhere, right? Just a fucking distant galaxy. It's got trillion suns on it. One of these suns has a planet. 
I'm saying that, but I don't know that that actual planet actually exists with the star which I'm actually No, and you see. can't see pictures of it in your mind, like, exactly yeah, so what that's it not looks a like. There's, I, I know that there's a star out there. Yeah, well, I, know, there. I know a bit more about God than you do about that planet. Which planet? <laughs> your theoretical planet. <laughs> Hypothetical in, in the galaxy very far away, yeah. Is it hypothetical? Yeah. In, in my book? or what In I'm your saying? mind. I haven't read your book. <laughs> yeah. It's hypothetical. Yeah, but my knowledge of God is not hypothetical to me. But your belief of God isn't a knowledge of God. It is if I'm right. But you don't know that you're right. Yeah, I do. No, but you, you feel as though you're right. I can't you? convince you I'm right. Well, but you, I'm you, right. you could convince me that you're I right. don't want to try. No, but perhaps you should. Why? Because then you might say something that shows that you know that you're right. Well, I kind <laughs> of... Because you don't know that you're I kind right. of been told that, you know, we've all got our own path, we've all got to do it for ourselves. So that's absolutely fine. It might not be right for you at the moment to do it. It might not be right. Well, if you're not in a position to say Maybe you're right, beyond it. You're not in a position to say that it's not right. No, I'm just not in a position to, to tell you what you should do. I'm not asking so you to tell me what to, to do, I'm asking you to explain to me what you think and feel so I know that you know it's true. Yeah, but I because can't... Because your belief of God is a I've, I've of already God. said, you know, until you feel it, yeah. you're not... See, when I say feelings, you know, my... Uh, the word, for me, that, that word has got so much around it. Mm. And it's going to be different to what you've got around that word, feelings. Well, I understand feelings as... A neurological and physiological thing. No, but I, well, I can explain my feelings in different yeah, ways. Your, and I yeah, your yeah. I want you. To, I want you to talk about your feelings. What you feel about your feelings? Well, what I feel at the minute <laughs> is that I would really like to hear from you how your theories are linked as one. Because then that would make me feel as though well, they're you not. Believe they're not one saying. theory. Because that's why I have to name each one, you know. You know, we have the theory of... Mother and father, God, soulmates, the reality of the 11-dimensional thing we live in, right? So I have to name them. But your 11-dimensional thing is to a 4-dimensional thing, or at least a 5th-dimensional thing. Because you believe that we have a 3-dimensional state here, a 3-dimensional state somewhere else, and a 3-dimensional state somewhere else. Yeah, add them up. That's not it. But they're not the dimensions in the physical sense that we understand dimensions to be, that stem from each other. So otherwise there would be a nine dimensions in, in one thing. Yeah. Whereas we don't exist we in nine do. dimensions right now. Yeah, we do. I thought it was eleven. Well, you've got time and truth. How as, is truth as two constants. Them? How how is... Because it's a constant, so there are two constants. Is I don't know how that constant? makes them a dimension, but Is truth really a constant? Yeah, there is a truth. How would you define truth in a constant sense? in regards to its dimensional being. Well, like like I've explained the the reality of the dimensions. But you you know. haven't. <laughs> you haven't explained the reality <laughs> of the dimensions. <laughs> There's you three said. in the physical. Yeah. There's three in the spiritual. Yeah. That's when we dream. There's three in the emotional realm, which is the dominant realm. Okay, so that's nine dimensions so that's when nine. you add them together. But they're not added together though, are they? They Why are not? in fact because you're saying that they're different realms. Like we have one yeah, but they all exist, and we, as a being, can access all of them. This literally cannot be true. Why? Because one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, four dimension. You need three five, dimensions two. for a realm. Forget four from three fifth dimensions. dimensions. You, they you, don't. You can't draw four dimensions. You, three, you, you, you can't three draw three dimensions in three. You can't draw four dimensions in a three-dimensional space. Because you do not have the fucking. Tools well, what to would do it that. be anyway? We've got height and width and depth. <clears throat> so the fourth dimension within our universe is time. Time, right. So what the fuck is that? That's not a normal dimension well, either, is height. it? Well, it is because it's a thing which can be travelled through one way or the other way. Okay. X axis, Y axis. <laughs> That's because of the way yeah, in which time and space are interacting with Yeah, the we're universe. moving through time. Well, we're, time is moving through space. That's why the universe is expanding, that's what dark energy, in my theory, that's what dark energy is. That's what the expansion of the universe is. The reason why we can only go through one direction of time is because that's the way the time dimension passes through um, parallel or perpendicular to the three spatial dimensions. In the fifth dimensional universe, you'd have four dimensions of space and one dimension of time. 
and that time to still be passing perpendicular through the lower dimensions. What's four dimensions of space look like? <coughs> it would be impossible for me to describe that. Yeah. Because I only have words that have been created to describe three-dimensional space. Yeah. I could tell you a long fucking tangent and you could develop a concept inside your brain, but even then that concept would be based upon your three-dimensional understanding because you haven't experienced four dimensions. Yeah. So I couldn't, I can't even imagine four dimensions, so that's why I think this theory is quite good because you've got... Because you need, you you've need got three, dimensions. You've got the realm thing, you know. But you need a, a Addition, a realm into your, into your theory, so... The reason why you can't have three separate places of three-dimensional space which are causally linked is because of what a dimension is and how it stems from the lower dimensions. In order for your three different places to be linked, the higher dimension would have to be fourth dimensional space, fifth dimensional space, and sixth dimensional yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it would have to be part of the same thing. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. No, it would have to be. Okay. In order to have that dimensional construct. Right. Yeah. Well, it is here. It is right here. When I fall asleep, I'm there, and I haven't moved physically, so it is here. So, if we want to understand if your theory can actually be true. Yeah. We need to understand what you think time is in these higher dimensions. So, well, like, you know, time is one that's already added, which is a bit, you know, <laughs> dodgy. dodgy. It's a, I, I kind of see, it just seemed to fit quite well, the time and truth being the two constants, like, wouldn't truth and parallel, time be the same thing? going on forever. W what, how, wouldn't truth and time be the same thing? Because if something is happening in time, then it's true, right? Because there need to be a separate dimension that says, okay, what's happening in time is actually taking place. Yeah, but because time, it's isn't, time it necessarily isn't, you know, some the truths don't change over time. There's only one truth, and that truth <laughs> is a sequence of events through time. So there is only one truth, and it does run through time. Does yeah, truth the truth just is, dimension? isn't it? It's like there is a... The truth just is, but it exists where? Yeah, Within there's, the a, time there's a sort of a... Place. Well, it happens all through it. So it doesn't have to so be. So it's a always there. Measure. Truth is what takes place. Truth is what is real. Yeah, there's events that are true, but there's also the true way things are set up, you know, because something is set up here. Which is the conditions of space and time. Yeah. Right? So those conditions of space and time. Which so if we're are pondering, truth. we're the ones pondering about what the fuck the truth is about it, but there is a truth, we, whether we know it or not, somebody knows it. But that truth is just how things are. Yeah. It's not a separate thing that says, okay, that's how things are. Because... No, it's not an entity or anything, no. So why does it need to be a separate thing? In order for that thing to be what it is, it doesn't have to have... I just thought it was, it was pretty true. neat. It was just sort of seemed neat. And that, that infinity thing, I liked that. And that's, you know, a, an example of a truth. So it fits. You can make predictions of that model i mean i suppose i could have i could have done this theory and just said 10 dimensions and not mentioned truth but you heard 11 dimensions from m theory string theory and thought okay let me see if my theory can be correct with that. <laughs> but it also it did just seem neat as well but you're trying to because describe. that when you do that nine thing and you do that pattern and you get that shape that's like two things yeah so you're taking scientific concepts. But truth and couldn't be ignored either. I didn't think truth could be. You know what's that? Um, there's that riddle in the beginning of one of the Bible chapters, John. In the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and da 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 da. da. The Word apparently was on. Yeah, but if you put truth into that. And God spoke the truth. And you say, in the beginning there was the truth, and the truth was with God, and then, yeah, and it, it, it's nice. I like, so I didn't want to leave truth out. The truth is a, truth is also part of my thing, you know, I've said right from the beginning, to find truth is important because, you know, it affects everything we do. And it's, you know, distruths, untruths, are the most destructive force in the universe. Distruths. If they have been told, it remains true they've been told. So then, yeah. if it is true. <laughs> Someone told a lie, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I need a piss. Yeah. How's this thing going? How long have we been recording for? Right, over two hours. Still yeah. says recording.
It must have been nearly four hours. No. It's quarter past five. Fuck off! <laughs> yeah. Shit. Check where my sign is. But maybe that could be a good place to, uh, to end it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any wavering from you. <laughs> yeah, I still don't understand if you understand what you're, you're talking right? about. <laughs> you're right? Yeah, good, okay, thanks. All right. All right. When you when you when you back. Okay then. All right. In a bit. Bye bye. Bye. How is he? Yeah, he's all right. Why don't we say bye more than once? Yeah. Yeah, do you reckon, is there anything, when's your book coming out? Um, I don't know, I have to finish it. Yeah. What's your channel called? Are you? Oh, there's nothing live on it at the minute. Oh. Yeah, I've taken it all off, well, private of it. Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, well, I, I, I still really want to understand how you think that all of your beliefs are the same or part of the same thing. Because you do understand that for them to be all true, they all have they all have to be connected. Sorry, sorry. Um, I I suppose to me, to me, I'm probably not needed, feeling like I need to explain. I suppose to me, they seem so obvious. Because it's it's the the main things I've been interested in, I guess. Yeah. And so maybe yeah, to somebody else they seem. But if you understand something, <coughs> then you understand how to explain it in a simple way. <coughs> well, I thought I had. But I don't understand anyway. Like I, I, I understand. That's not my your, fault. I understand what your <laughs> theories are, but I don't understand how they're connected as one thing. Yeah, well, okay then. Maybe that's something I need to think about, but... Yeah. I don't... Yeah. Alright, I need a piss. So, what do you think? Is there anyone been watching this long? What do you reckon? Is anyone going to be watching this long? <laughs> I don't know. It might have been. It's been four hours. I probably... Fucking hell. Yeah, it's, it's 20 past five, so it's been about yeah. four hours. Alright, say goodbye. See you. Bye. Ciao for now. Yeah. <laughs>